That's okay. I think there's an AV issue. Yeah. All right. Um, so now that AV is working, uh, again, this is Daria Gandhi, uh, machine learning for social good. Hi, can everyone hear me fine? Yep. yep. Uh, so, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dehra Gandhi. I am uh, going to talk about machine learning for social good. And basically, uh, I'm going to talk about something which is fairly non-technical, but uh, significant in something that we face on a daily basis. And, uh, and well, let's continue the talk. So, I am a uh, data scientist at Julia Computing. And... Uh, what that basically means is that we work on a lot of uh, machine learning type solutions for a lot of commercial purposes. Um, and what happens when we basically take this entire knowledge and we, we decide, um, let's apply this to some of the world's most, uh, most more, more basic problems in the world, right? And uh, this is basically how, how we uh, think of problems today as not being something that are very, very constrained to just us, but something which is uh, very, very far spread. And uh, so what we did here was we, we uh, partnered with this amazing foundation called Step, and their idea of uh, working basically is that uh, they want to create learning platforms, but also what they do is, is that they have a lot of uh, amazing uh, connections with the government, and uh, that gives the government buy-in. And so any, anyone who's ever worked with uh, working on social problems knows that one thing that you really need is getting policy changes to be actually implemented. And uh, technology is one thing, but it's, it's really important for us to actually see those changes out there in the world. And that's where, that's where uh, this comes in. Now, one problem that I'm going to talk about here really quickly is about how uh, wildfires have been, have been kind of growing at, a, at an insane rate. And uh, it affects millions of people. It affects hundreds of thousands of acres of land, which is no longer uh, usable. It affects so many uh, populations. And the thing is, we think of many, many ways of uh, trying to figure out how to actually you know, get, get some kind of forecasting going around uh, these kinds of situations. And it's not just related to just uh, wildfires, but basically any large-scale disaster, uh, really. And uh, here's just an example of the California wildfire. Um, and the typical solution, right, uh, to work with this is this uh, system called RADFIRE. Um, and the thing is that the system works on basically how the plumage patterns of these fires work. And uh, it, it relies on a lot of complicated machinery, both uh, on the ground as well as uh, in, on the satellites. And the thing is that it requires almost 12 hours to uh, do a single prediction round. And we feel that is not enough, purely because we know that we have better solutions out there. And we propose one such solution, and that is MASCAR CNN. It's a fairly, fairly standard model. It's one of the state-of-the-art uh, uh, se uh, segmentation models. And basically what we're trying to do here is figure out in an image what areas basically constitute a fire. And that's, that's fairly uh, a standard problem if you think about it from a machine learning point, uh, point of view where it is just object detection, right, or uh, image recognition. And why we actually like it is because we know for a fact that it can be scaled very, uh, very well, both up and down, which means that uh, we, can, we can work with a lot of uh, varied kinds of data. For example, in this case, uh, we'll, we'll show you how we've uh, trained models based both on uh, satellite images as well as ground level images, and that's, that's pretty good, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about the model really quickly. So, the way we've implemented it is directly from the paper, and uh, basically it's a ResNet 50 uh, punched inside uh, this thing called a feature pyramid network, which basically reduces the spatial uh, resolution as we move on, which forces the higher level or uh, higher order features up the scale and uh, makes it a lot more, uh, uh, that those are the features that we're interested in. That's why we're able to find these. Next, we look at the RPN layer um, or, yeah, so that's basically one of the bigger, uh, with bigger changes that we've seen in uh, mask RCNN or the RCNN kinds of networks. I'm pretty sure everyone is very much familiar with these, so I'm not going to waste too much time on this. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to show that the code for it is fairly simple. 
if this thing actually okay let's see yeah uh, so the code for this is very simple this is just the mask layer out of uh, the uh, the git repo and as you can see it's it's just a flux layer um, composed of conv blocks and the actual um, forward pass right on the on the bottom so yeah uh, constructing this was the easy bit what was difficult however was actually working with the data and finding out this data uh, as you can imagine, these kinds of data sets are not uh, very, very widely available, and for good reason. It's really, really complicated to actually not just uh, procure, but also annotate. And that is really important for our case, because we're going to be not just doing some kind of uh, bounding box regressions around it, but also trying to figure out these masks that uh, will actually tell us how these, uh, these wildfires, or for that matter, any kinds of objects that we're trying to um, uh, uh, mask on, are changing over time, and that's what is the really big message here. Uh, using fairly standard machine learning procedures, what we can see is that we can uh, come up with solutions that have significantly larger impact. Uh, so we, we basically take images out of uh, things like uh, you know, Google Earth, as well as just images that we can procure of, uh, of existing data sets. And we throw this into uh, into this thing called a VGG image annotator. Basically, it allows us to create these nice JSON um, representations around the areas that we're interested in. And yeah, okay, the notebook. So yeah, so this is a very, very simple example of uh, how, how this actual pipeline works. Um, there is some text about it, you can go through it at whichever point. All right. Right, so this is just an example of how we actually annotate these images. So this is uh, directly out of a JSON that we uh, that have put here just for you know, making it easier for the presentation, but that's, that's all right. Um, a simple predict function with the model, the image, and some metadata around it. So basically, this is um, you know the size of the image, uh, spatial resolution, and things like that. Uh, it goes through the prediction procedure, and what we end up with these are these boxes and um, masks. So the masks are basically the pixel level overlaps of the objects that we're trying to predict, and the, uh, and the boxes are the bounding boxes around them. And we just run it through the pipeline, blah, 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 and voila, we have, we have uh, found out the fire areas in our image. Uh, and as I said for, uh, earlier, it scales pretty well up and down, so that way we can be fairly reliable, that, uh, assured that we can actually use them on a larger scale, and that's what we're planning on doing as well. So this is pretty neat, right? I mean, we, we can act, uh, actually use these uh, methodologies to come up with uh, pipelines which can be used in the real world. And the good news is that from 12 hours uh, of prediction time, we're, we're down to basically minutes and seconds here now. OK. So uh, back here, OK, slums. Slums, the way I see it, are a human rights catastrophe. One in six people on Earth today live in slums in conditions worse than we have ever seen in our lives, as well as uh, the predictions that these numbers are just going to get worse and worse as the time moves on. This is not funny at this point. We need to figure out what is happening, what is going wrong. And one way which we see really fit to do this is understanding how these uh, slum populations are growing. Uh, similar approach, we get these images uh, from our various data sources. We train a separate, uh, separately trained Moscow CNN model on it and uh, figure out the changes over time. And to do this, we actually did um, uh, approach a team which had done something very similar earlier, um, and they presented the work at NeurIPS 18. So 
but this is an entire uh, Flux implementation of the same. But we have also generalized it, as you can see. Um, I'll speak later about how we can actually use it uh, in different problem domains as well. Right, so this is, this is the team that actually implemented uh, the original paper. And uh, one interesting thing that we both agree on, um, their team and ours, is that uh, we need to be figuring out ways that we can monitor these changes over time. And that is what drives policy at the end of the day. And that is what our goal is, to come up with robust solutions which we can uh, get actual real world data out of, which we can use to make informed decisions. Uh, I'm just going to go through quickly about uh, a, a similar example of how we did it with the fire. Uh, so this is an, uh, an image out of uh, the Mumbai slums in Tharavi. They're one of the world's biggest. Um, and as you can imagine, that comes with a lot of baggage. Um, and running it through a very similar pipeline, we end up with uh, actually identifying the slums in their uh, corresponding locations. And these are just images that I got off the internet, but... Uh, yeah, we can we can um, scale this problem as far as we can, basically. Now, how uh, far can we go, right? And uh, one of the newer things that we're trying to uh, plan around is looking into the world's garbage problem. It's actually becoming pretty untenable out there um, with with ecological disasters of the scale that we've never seen before, and. Uh, we're pretty sure that we can apply very similar models uh, on bigger problems. And the idea here is just that, uh, you know, you come up with a, a pretty robust pipeline on how we can actually uh, deal with them, and then we make informed decisions based on it. So there's some, th some things left to do in the Mascar CNN project. Um, we have to still benchmark against uh, existing solutions. I have to say the preliminary results look very much in our favor, but we need to document everything, as well as um, you may have noticed that I haven't shown the mask. That's because the rendering is sort of broken, and that needs to be fixed, and general documentation around it. Thank you. So the question is basically where we got the images from. Uh, it's it's a combination of uh, some existing data sets. For example, uh, the Indian government actually has uh, satellite images of the areas that uh, they look at, as well as uh, just doing Google, uh, just scraping Google for images of um, some areas. So that was basically for the demonstration here. So those images that you saw were basically out of Google directly. Absolutely, yeah. So um, there's this a bunch of uh, work around finding uh, areas where where we have to target, and uh, one of the more severe ones that we saw for uh, uh, wildfires was California, and similarly they have a lot of uh, in in Puerto Rico as well as in in Africa, they have problems related with uh, slums and uh, growing slum populations as well. So those are two target areas that we are planning on moving to. And with that, let's thank our speaker one last time.